Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Marta Tejedor. I'm a specialist in hepatology and liver transplant. I work at the Hospital Universitario Infanta Elena and I collaborate with the nephrology department at the Gregorio Marañón um, where we study hyponatremia. I would like to share with you today the results of our work that we presented recently in the 55th ERA EDTA Congress at Copenhagen. The title of our study is Dynamic NMR Spectroscopy in the Follow-up of Acute and Chronic Hypotonic Brain Edema. These are our disclosures. As you know, when a hypotonic challenge occurs, the brain becomes swollen. Over the first 48 hours, there is an active, active extrusion of electrolytes followed by an outflow of water to restore the brain volume. If this situation persists, the above mechanism becomes exhausted and osmolites need to be pumped outside the cells to drag water and maintain a constant brain volume. If there is yet another water challenge, we believe that because the defensive mechanisms would be exhausted, the degree of brain edema would be severe and would correlate with the worsening of the symptoms. If hyponatremia is overcorrected with hypertonic saline, the brain will shrink and our patients will be at risk of central pontine myelinolysis. Up until now, assumption was made that the brain behaved as a whole. With our study, we wanted to assess spatial and temporal responses to hypotonicity within different areas of the brain. We wanted to study the differences between acute and chronic hyponatremia, and we wanted to correlate these findings with behavioral changes. We had two groups of animals, the chronic hyponatremia group, where hyponatremia was induced with daily injections of DDAVP and water, in addition to a hyposodic liquid diet. And we had a control group. Two maneuvers could be performed. An acute water overload would be given to the chronic hyponatremia group to induce acute on chronic hyponatremia or to the control group to induce acute hyponatremia. Alternatively, hypertonic saline could be given to the chronic hyponatremia group to induce hypercorrection. We studied the changes in the brain volume by means of nuclear magnetic resonance using the apparent diffusion coefficient. This coefficient allows to monitor the movement of water across the cell membrane, and it correlates inversely with the degree of brain edema. The lower the ADC value, the greater the intracellular water content. As you can see, after an initial water uh, overload, there will be an initial phase where the water will move inside the cells, followed by an initial defensive period where the water will be pumped outside the cells, but this defense is transient, and finally, the situation will stabilize. We looked at different regions of interest, namely the cortex, basal ganglia, internal capsule, subthalamic area, including the red nucleus, hippocampus, hypothalamus, and pyramidal tract. This slide shows how we selected each region of interest in a structural NMR image with the aid of an atlas to subsequently measure the ADC in the appropriate sequence. The behavior studies had been performed by our group previously with mice, both under controlled conditions with the Morris water maze and in uncontrolled conditions with the four corner test. In the water maze, the animals are allowed to swim freely until they reach the platform. The resulting video is assessed to measure the trajectories in different attempts. The four corner test measures the number of quadrant changes per minute of animals when filmed in their cages. These are the results of the four corner test. As you can see, the induction of chronic hyponatremia results in a reduction of the spontaneous exploratory behavior in mice, despite the fact there is no significant change in natremia. The induction of acute and chronic hyponatremia worsens the spontaneous beha behavior even more and is accompanied by a significant drop in the serum sodium. 
the Morris water maze shows a progressive improvement in the trajectory in controlled animals with training that worsens in chronic hyponatremia and acute on chronic hyponatremia. But what's going on in the brain? As you can see, despite minimal differences in baseline sodium, the chronic hyponatremia group has a greater degree of brain edema at baseline. After the water challenge, there is an initial defensive phase that is more efficient in the chronic hyponatremia group. However, this initial phase is transient, and by the end of the study, the situation is similar to baseline. These two curves do not overlap in time exactly. As you can see, the control animals sense and react to the water challenge much earlier than the chronic hyponatremia group. When we looked at the different regions of interest that we were studying, we could see that those areas richer in myelinated fibers seem to have a delayed response to the water challenge when compared to the gray matter. We looked at this with more detail and there seemed to be a pattern where the gray matter sensed the water overload sooner than the white matter, but it also defended from it earlier. Interestingly, by the time the cortex has finished defending itself, the internal capsule is still becoming edematous. The first region to react to changes in osmolality is the hypothalamus, which makes sense because this is the region with the smaller water content at baseline. Hypertonic saline accelerates three times the recovery from intracellular edema when compared to sp spontaneous physiological response to an acute water overload. To conclude, brain's response to hypotonicity is not homogeneous. Cellular swelling and response happen at different time points in different regions. Baseline intracellular water content is higher in the chronic hyponatremia group. Initial response to water overload in chronic hyponatremia is more effective than in controls, suggesting that more severe symptoms could be related to a depletion in osmolites. Myelinated fibers show a delayed perception and response to cellular swelling. This suggests that damage leading to central pontine myelinolysis could be located at the transition zones between neuronal somas and axons. The smaller baseline water content of the hypothalamus offers a local advantage to early detection of changes in osmolality. And finally, hyponatremia correction with hypertonic saline extracts intracellular water three times faster than physiological defensive mechanisms. Thank you very much for your attention. If you liked our talk, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.